Right, so when parents aren't around, um, and there's a good reason why I've made that the title, because for me, the most important aspect in self-protection teaching is putting a person in control. Uh, that is the foundation to any self-protection program, and that, that will link into what we talk about with attitude. But if you look at that in the title, when parents are not around, we're dealing with situations when uh, adults, uh, guardians, parents, teachers are not in the vicinity of a, a, a violent crime that could be committed against a child. So this is what we're, we're training children to be able to protect themselves against. It's when the, uh, the responsible adults are not present. Okay, that is the, that's the purpose. Okay, so my background quickly. So um, again, I'm gonna breeze through this very, very quickly because you know time is short. But again, I grew up on traveling circus, um, which exposed me to lots of different crisis situations, um, unusual risks that people would normally encounter from quite a young age. I started my instructor training in combative systems in 1990. I've got self-defense instructor qualifications under Jeff Thompson and Mo Teague. I uh, have a BTEC uh, level three advanced certification in self-defense. That's one of the very rare accredited qualifications you can get in the UK for um, self-defense. I'm also an OCRA one assessor for national vocational qualifications. So I'm quite aware of how um, the educational system works and in a vocational capacity. Um, I regularly update my knife and edged weapons awareness program, uh, mainly just because of the quality of the service that we have with that, which is probably one of the best edge weapon uh, awareness programs I can think of in the UK. Um, and a lot of the stuff there is all uh, industry standard stuff. Um, obviously my, my formal martial arts qualifications, Cicado, Muay Thai and American kickboxing to begin with but then I branched down to things like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, jiu -jitsu, traditional Jiu-Jitsu, Chinese martial arts, Filipino martial arts, Western boxing and wrestling. Um, I've written for various martial arts magazines over the years um, and obviously I'm a published author of When Parents Aren't Around which is what this is focused on. I've also got two other martial arts books and one non-martial arts book out there at the moment too. Um, so we'll move straight on to the subject of self-protection. So self-protection uh, is an umbrella term we use uh, to, to describe self-defense and personal security. Um, that's a simple way of, of looking at it. So what are they? Well, self-defense, which is the, the term that a lot of people seem to use interchangeably with self-protection, is a very specific area of self-protection, uh, generally speaking. The reason why it's a very particular area and, and we're... Uh, uh, Generally, I try to be, I don't have to be anal about it, but I generally uh, I'm, I'm quite um, on point about self-defense. I'm very much um, make sure that we use this as the term what we're talking about. It's the hard skills, it's the physical skills. When I refer to the term hard skills and soft skills, hard skills are the physical skills. These are the fighting skills uh, that you'd use to stop an attack before it takes place or when it is taking place. So either preemptively or, or if you are being attacked at self-defense. But most importantly, it's the legally recognized definition. OK, so when we talk about self-defense, it's a legally recognized term um, and we really make this an important point. So when, you know, um, everybody, no matter what age you are, you, when you're training in a system of self-protection, when you talk about self-defense, you're talking about things that um, if you're caught um, in, a, in a fight situation, and um, and it did have to go uh, to, to court, or it did, or there was some form of police investigation, or even if it's in a situation in a, in a school um, situation where uh, you know parents are involved and uh, participants are involved in the fight, um, it's important that you um, that you understand that when you're saying the word self-defense, this is something where legally you're allowed to do it. Okay, whatever techniques or tactics that you're using, you're legally allowed to do it. Um, and it's and, and what defines it as self-defense is the context of where it's happened. Okay, so just they said it's, it's worth keeping that in mind. So, you know, you can say to somebody, "Oh, I use my karate, or I use my kung fu, or I use my kickboxing, whatever." These aren't legally recognised terms. Self-defense is something that uh, people um, involved in the legal profession, whether it's law enforcement, as police officers, um, courts, judges they all can recognize that term self-defense. If you say self-defense, if you say karate, they, you know, only people involved in karate, maybe even your specific school will, will be able to agree, not agree with what, with what you've been doing. If you say self-defense, that is something um, that is recognized, that, that will need to be tried and, and recognized um, by people in a legal sense. So it's very important we understand that, even um, for youngsters, even for, pe even for minors, people under the age of 18. 
Personal security. Now, this is personal security refers to the non-physical skills used to prevent or reduce violence. OK, so generally I expand this also to mean things that happen after a fight as well, after an incident. So these are the soft skills. OK, so with that in mind, um, we, we often test people to say um, how much of which um, do you think you should have if you had a balance, a percentage balance. Um, and a lot of people um, because so much training tends to be physical and this is the thing that and again I've discussed this with with Ben on on several occasions um, but people get so invested in the physical side of fighting um, when it comes to self-defense when it comes to self-defense the self-defense part of it is only a minor part and all the um, all the best commanders instructors um, Peter Constein, Jeff Thompson all the best ones agree that the split should be something like 10% self-defense, so 10% hard skills and 90% personal security. So that gives you an idea. So the non-physical stuff is overwhelmingly more important than the physical stuff when it comes to defending yourself in a real life situation. We're not talking about competition, not talking about sparring, not talking about um, going through different like combative movements for the sake of the art or the history or whatever. When you're talking about actually defending yourself in a real life situation, the non-physical stuff trumps the physical stuff most of the time, nine times out of 10. So 90% of it needs to be geared towards that. So that's the reason why we need to do uh, courses like this, where we where we look at what is the soft skills, because you know often soft skills are just given lip service by people. So um, so apologies um, if, the, if that photo is um, is a little shocking to some of you. Okay, it's it's uh, again it's a superficial wound, but it gives you an idea of of. Uh, of, of what violence means and certainly when it's looking with youngsters uh, so violence is defined oops sorry about that so v violence is defined um, as behavior involving physical force intending to hurt damage or kill someone or something so as much as we want to roast uh, you know uh, paint it whichever way we want to we want to say things when we're, we're talking about um, self-defense well, a lot of time we're talking about handling violence stopping violence from happening to us if violence does happen to us to uh, uh, to stop the violence as quickly as possible so um, here, here we go there's a classic example here so expectation versus reality so we've got um, an image of, of some one-step sparring there um, where you've got a compliant partner it looks very uh, stylized and people are, you know, sitting, sitting uh, positions um, and they're moving, going through the moment at the movement. Where on the other side of it, you've got the reality of a fight. OK, so this is a classic sort of school fight here. Two on one. It's, it's scrappy. Um, you know, it's it's not it's not pleasant. It's not pretty. And it's and it's very, very rarely fair. OK. So um, we come to the first part of um, your of your soft skill set and I like to begin with respect um, and attitude so respect starts with you okay you have to understand that you're worth protecting and one thing I can say to all of you out there is that you're worth protecting okay there's people who love you uh, there's people who um, want you to come home safely there are people who want you not to be hurt um, you have every right to protect yourself and not to allow another person from physically hurting you. You are worth protecting. OK, you've got a lot to contribute to this world. There's lots of people who will benefit um, from you being a healthy, happy, productive part of society. Um, so and there's no, no one else has got a right to take that away from you. OK, so it's very important to have respect for yourself. But I provided, you know, your, your law abiding, you have every right to go on and, and, and live the life that, that, that you're most capable of, of achieving. Um, and to let somebody for the sake of them wanting to hurt you, OK, take that away. Um, again, that's not on. That, have that respect for yourself. So start with that and understand that you're worth uh, respecting and re really really mean that I mean there's, there's a difference between being sort of arrogant and, and you know saying oh I'm the best I'm the best and, and putting other people down and all that sort of thing that's something totally different but to be able to have an idea that uh, you are you are worth um, you are worth respect you're worth protecting you have respect for yourself okay and respect others so that then extends out to expecting others and you feel comfortable in yourself um, so you you look to not cause trouble uh, and certainly not to bully. OK, so these are things and these aren't necessarily always easy temptations to avoid with people. Humans are like other like many other animals um, are pack animals. OK, we, 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 we uh, um, thrive in groups and always have them always thrived in small groups. 
um, and that's that's what tends to happen throughout our history and that's what and our behavior can be seen and those and being in that group can draw us into bad situations. It can either draw us into groups where we get ourselves in danger um, or we can endanger other people. So we need to have respect for other people and uh, we can uh, and choose not to bully. So a lot of that, you know, can come from just having that uh, personal respect, but also to understand and to, uh, you know, that other people need to be treated fairly as well. Um, and again, you know, that that that, that um, starts it because, again, a lot of people who don't have respect for themselves tend to, you know, can lash out. Some people don't. Some people um, just become targets themselves, um, which, again, which is what we don't want. And other people can um, say so they lash out and then get themselves involved in, other, in their own sort of problems as well. So you know, having respect and respect for others, you'll generally create a good atmosphere for yourself and you're less likely to be involved in violent situation it's not a guarantee it's definitely not a guarantee okay there's a lot more to it than that but it starts with respect to you and respect to others so what is a good attitude so first of all i would say a good attitude is the willingness to be able to walk away from a fight um, when it comes to fighting it's not glamorous um, it's not glamorous it comes from an ancient feeling in, our, in us uh, where we feel like we have to fight sometimes to be um, in a good position in our group. So remember when I said we're all pack animals? There's a classic example. Um, you know, we, we, we uh, in, in our minds, you know, very ancient part of our brain, um, what is driving us to be competitive, is driving us um, to be important in, in the group because that's what would happen. You know, if you look in, if you look in uh, packs of animals, often, you know, animals that, uh, that don't fight, don't stand up for themselves, they get pushed down in the pecking order, they get the least food um, and, you know, and they get generally more, more vulnerable often within a group. So, but we don't need to know that. We build up a society now where we don't need to engage ourselves into unnecessary fights. So, so good attitude is to have the strength to be able to walk away from, from a fight situation that's not necessary. And any type of fight, um, virtually every fight can be avoided, okay? We're dealing, when we talk about self-defense, we talk about self-protection, um, we are, um, we're, we're talking about, um, Fights that cannot be avoided. So fights that cannot be avoided are an assault. We will get to that in a moment. But the willingness to just walk away from a fight is, is the beginning of it. Don't get drawn in. Don't get drawn in by insults. Don't get drawn in by taunts. No matter how bad, no matter how personal. If soon as you get drawn in, you've lost because you've already done what the person who's been baiting you wants you to do in the first place. So you know, that's, that's the cornerstone of not uh, being willing to walk away from a fight. Um, but if a fight does happen, good attitude is the willingness to do everything that is needed in order to be able to escape. So you've got to be able to fight and never give in. So you've got to have that willingness to do that. So there, there you go, you've got your two sides of it. You have your strong exterior that prevents you from getting involved in unnecessary fights. Um, you know, fights over um, petty small things, fights that, 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 would, that can be avoided, um, willing to walk away from those and a willingness that if it does happen, because if it does happen, you're going to go all in, do everything you possibly can in order to escape. And that's the important point. And again, that defines what we're talking about, self-protection. Anything outside of that isn't self-protection and it isn't self-defense. And it isn't, and you're going to have a hard job trying to explain that um, if ever you get involved, um, if ever the law got, uh, got involved, um, if anyone else gets, you know, anyone else got involved, if it's, um, you know, parents, teachers, um, other people, other, you know, responsible adults gets involved. If you ever get in a fight, you want to be in a situation where you can completely justify why you got in that fight in the first place, as in you would defending yourself. Bad attitude is to start or have unnecessary fights, okay, to, to, to begin with. So we've, just, so we've just covered that. So that's immediately a bad attitude. It's weak because you are, you are now, um, you're not, you haven't got the mental discipline or toughness or, or self-respect um, to be able to say, if I walk away from here, I can take the insults. I can take what other people think they said. Um, what other people say about me um, I can handle that um, but again a, a weakness to that would be no no I'm going to get drawn in and go for it so it's so, you know, what I call a bad attitude um, and uh, giving up um, so yeah in a real life situation when things get stuck in there's nothing wrong okay you know and so you get involved in things so I'm not saying win you know win at all costs we're not talking about that we're talking about life and death situations situations where you could be physically hurt um you need to have this this will in your mind to never give up if I had to tell a person um that let's say they were going to be involved in an unavoidable fight situation and they had minimal training if um, in a hypothetical situation is going to happen and there's no way out and they've got to physically fight what is the best tip I could give them um well the best tip I would give them is to never give up 
Okay, that's just, uh, that, 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 is the, that is the basis. You will find a way. As long as you can breathe, you can keep going. And, so, so, and there's a, again, there's good books on it. And again, for the adults, I'd recommend books like um, Ben Sherwood's The Survival Club, which will give you examples of people in the most unbelievably difficult situations that, that, got, out, that got out of it, where people were seriously injured and they, they survived. And through, you know, pretty much through the sheer will to never give in. Um, right, so yeah, respect yourself, and you uh, and you will respect others. That is generally what we find with with respect. So, um, right, so if anyone's got some space here, we can do a little build. We can do a warm up activity. Okay, so the first thing, you're in your home, um, and so typically in our home we feel very very safe. Um, if there's a place that uh, it's it's a place that most people feel their safest. Um, there are exceptions, of course, but generally speaking, the home is, is the place that most of us feel, uh, um, feel our safest. However, things can happen in the home. There are things like home invasions. A number of different things could happen within a home environment. You could have people over who are guests who do turn out to be aggressive or enemies at other different points. So we need to understand where our exit points are in any given place. So even now, maybe even forget that this is your home. Look around you. And where is your nearest exit point? Well, for me, as you can see behind me, I've got a door straight behind me. I go out that door, I turn right, um, and then I'm, I'm straight into my hallway. I turn right again, I'm straight out. I'm out the front door. Um, if, I go, if I go straight out, if I turn right, so if I go to this door, turn right, go straight on, okay? I need to turn left, go across the kitchen to go to my back door. These are my exit points. So look around you um, and see where your exit points are, first of all, okay? Know, know where your exit points are in order to access. Um, so we'll look at some movement okay so first of all can we um so, uh, can everyone um get up okay if we can uh, see everyone get back up good okay i'm just gonna move my chair away this one here okay so we're just gonna look at some very basic movements okay so first of all okay posture with purpose so how do you stand so typically, um, different people's stances in, uh, give away a lot about what they're like um, as a person. If, and even if they don't give away what they're like, it's whatever you're going to be giving to somebody else. So if you stand, um, again, some people do this, you get this kind of splayed arm kind of attitude sort of thing. That, that goes a stage too far. You're, you, you, um, to some people, that's going to show a lot of confidence. Um, but there's some sort of people that that's going to... Going to um, intimidate um, are not the sort of people who who, who you're we're trying to defend against okay but unfortunately there's going to be a, a there's going to be a section of people who we are trying to uh, defend against who as soon as you show an arrogant stance as soon as you show splayed arms chest too far forward head up like this and that sort of attitude you're going to become a target for them because they're going to see you as being a challenge to their position um, and again if you haven't got what backs up they'll again it becomes an unnecessary fight situation then you've got this, okay, so obviously people put their heads down. So immediately, not only that, you switched off, but, but you are now immediately in a very um, vulnerable situation, position. You become a soft target uh, for the sort of person who would you know, be targeting people like that, the predator. So stances are, should be nice and relaxed, okay? So definitely shoulders back uh, and head up, okay? And the position is so you can look around. So I know where my exit point is. So we're just gonna walk, okay, can we just, uh, so you've, got, you've just got the room, okay, there, so it's, we're gonna walk, just walk around naturally. But as you walk around naturally, I want you to keep your head forward, okay, and look at a point, okay, as you're, as you're going. So as, as you see me as I'm walking here, okay, again, I've got limited space, I've got a big room to walk across, but I'm walking, looking straight ahead of me, okay, as, as I'm there, and straight ahead of me, and I'm moving around, okay, so we're there. And so again, if we were in a hall, this is what we would be doing. So we move, our hands down, okay? Again, it's confident, but without being aggressive, without being arrogant. Um, and again, you're keeping that kind of position there. So now as I'm here, so where's my exit point? So I can see where my exit point is at the moment. As I'm doing that, I've got my back towards the exit, because that's what I'm looking for. Okay, I'm making sure that I'm not just gonna blindly go back into the exit. I can see out the corner of my eye. And often people you know, think that they have to turn their head to look at a thing. You can see things out the corner of your eye, take things in your peripheral vision. So we're here, that's my exit point, okay? So can everybody, sounds like a really simple thing to do, okay? But can we just work on looking there, here, move forward, okay? And then now move back towards the exit, okay? See if you, now if some of you are doing this, some of you are kind of like that, okay? Well, this is telling you something straight away, okay? So 
you know, if we, you know, we can all, we can all be here and strike and punch in and I'll start to that. But if we can't move tactically towards an exit point, then that's a problem. Okay, that's going to be a problem because and I don't care what people say about um, not running away. Um, exiting, again, is, is a primary self-protection uh, tool we need to have. It's a primary self-defense tool. It's a primary hard skill we need to have. We need to be able to move towards our exit. We need to know where they are and to make sure that they're secure. And we need to get access them as quickly as we possibly can. Because as a threat, as time goes on and a threat, um, and we've realized we've got a confirmed threat, a confirmed threat to us, it gets more problematic as time goes on. The threat gets bigger. Okay, so now you could be after just dealing with one person, you could be dealing with more than one person, or you could be dealing with a person with a weapon. And so it gets to the stage where it's going to come. Your chance of dealing with that situation physically start reducing. Get to an exit, and we've got our advantage. We've got distance. We can move away. Okay, so we're just going to again. So up here. Okay, there. Okay, and then we're going to move towards the exit. Okay, so just a little bit faster now. We'll walk towards the walk towards your screen. Okay, and let's go towards the exit point. Okay, check it. Here, yeah. move towards the exit point. Good. Again, calm. Exit point. Okay. Okay. Right now, just just calm normally, everybody. Just walk around here. Okay. Breathe in. Breathe out. Nice and quick and controlled. Exit. Okay. Back in. Bring your breathing down again. Control your breathing. Control. Look around. Look at your points. Straight ahead. Exit. Okay. Again, move. Good. Good. Exit. Okay. Right. Anyone got any objects? Okay. I've got a few objects here. Okay. Get a few like objects. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Sit. Focus mitts. I've got this, this little bottle, bottle of water here. I've got down here. I'm going to put that in front of me. Okay, so it's right directly in front of me. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, it's going here, right in front of me here. I'm going to put some uh, one pad there. Okay, I've got a, a little kettlebell here. Okay, can stick that just here. Okay, to break a little rough triangle. So this point here. So now I'm imagining I've got different hazards. Okay, they could be anything you want them to be. So I've just made a little triangle. Has everyone done that? Good. Okay, little triangle. Right. So these could be. These could be things in your way, or they could be people, okay? What you're gonna do is you're here now and you need to get away from them, okay? So the first one is blocking your, 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 uh, your doorway, your exit point here. So we need to better move around him, okay? And we're gonna come move out here. So we're gonna have to come to there. I'm switching here and I'm moving towards the door. And I'm keeping my eye on this point here. So I go here, switch, there. And you'll notice my hands come up. Yeah, as I go there, because I'm, I'm in a ready position. It's not a guard, it's just active hands. So I'm here, exit. Okay, again, calm, exit. Yeah. Now I'm gonna come out this way, go out to the right. Okay, now I've got two, these two objects to get past. I've gone between them, now I've got to go through them, and I've got this one here as well. Okay, so I need to better get past him and get past him. Minimal time with my back to them, okay? Exit. Again, exit, exit, okay, exit, okay, right, so from here, we're just going to go into a kneeling position, so I'm just sitting up here, kneeling position, um, half kneeling rather, sorry, so we call it combat base in uh, in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, again, this is like a control position here again, a compromised position. Okay, exit, bring out this way, there. Okay, we'll do the first exit, so we'll call this exit one, exit two. Exit one's the original one you did, exit two is the second one here. Okay, again, down in position, exit one. And again, exit two. Exit two. Exit one. Exit two. Exit one. Exit one. Again, relax. Down. Exit two. 
Okay, cool. Right, so just going to move these to the side for the moment again. Okay, so just going to move. Okay, so we're moving around now. So keep our hands up, moving around. Okay, everyone around. The okay, important here is that again we can move. Very, very important. All fights, fight situations, they move, they're dynamic. Try to get out of the habit of just doing lots of fixed techniques on the spot. It's got a time and a place for it, but most fights are moving. So we're just gonna move, okay? So we're moving now, our hands are up, okay? So again, threats could be coming from anywhere, moving an area here, just want you to be in a combative mood, but nice and relaxed, okay? So moving here, and change levels, round, Change levels. Okay, why do we change levels? Well, again, someone tries to grab hold of us. We drop our levels, and they're likely to be taken down. Okay, that's again, that's an anti-grappling procedure. We should get used to doing that. If someone gets hold of you, you drop levels. Drop levels. Drop levels. Drop levels. Okay. Switch direction. Okay, side, side. Again, which direction? Side, side. Okay, ready to run in any direction you need to go in. Drop levels. Switch sides. Drop levels. Back up, hands up. Okay, so this from here, nice and relaxed. Okay, just off the spot. Again, a ready kind of position. I'm not going to call a start, so I want this nice and relaxed. Your hands are here, okay, and your rear hand's just going to come straight out. It can be a reverse punch or a cross, or it can be a straight palm. Self-defense, I generally prefer palms, okay, to the head and often teach that. Um, less chance of getting damaged and has a lot of impact, okay? But again, if you're accurate with your punches, there's no problem doing that, it's what comes natural to you. Nice to relax, palm. Strike, 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 it's the rear strike, strike. Relax, strike, relax, strike, relax, strike, relax, strike. And where are we striking? We're striking um, at your headlet level and whatever comes towards you. So um, again, if it's, if it's someone around your sort of height, okay, then strikes would be you know, generally towards your, the head area, the head region, your own head region um, is the best place to go for. Get a much, get a, a, a larger person, person. Again, if we're talking about people, you know, under the age of 16, under the age of 14, you've got a lot of different sizes that we're dealing with, okay? So I'm aware of a lot of you, you know, you're, you're dealing with people who are all different sort of sizes. So again, you know, it's just, it's still your head level though. But it might be their stomach, it might be their groin, okay? There could be any other number of targets that they're gonna face with doing your head level. So when you do that, that's what we need to visualize, okay? Other hand, strike, relax. And again, strike. Okay, notice my hand comes up as I strike, so I'm protecting. Strike. 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 Okay, good. Relax. No stance. Again, we come from here. The only stance we've got is just on balance, okay? So you're just naturally on balance. Strike, okay? Strike, okay? Another thing to important point is, again, so we're moving around a little bit now, a little bit more movement. And strike, strike, strike. So strike, 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 strike. So targets, again, we look at this in our anti-abduction stuff, but you know, if we're looking at an adult, like an anti-abduction situation with an adult, we have to look at what, what's coming towards us. Striking someone's head, striking someone's stomach. These might not be in range, okay? So we have to strike what's coming towards us. So again, we tend to use like very much our forearms and straight shots here, whatever comes towards us. Again, we might bite, we might, we might bite, we might push the fingers back, any number of things. But again, to just be able to even to slap a hand that comes towards you, okay, to have that tactic, also to strike with the forearm, okay, so it's a very, very simple procedure. So certainly, again, if you're looking at big size difference, you know, if you're, if you're 10 years old doing this, okay, and again, and the chances are, by the time we're dealing with anti-bullying, peer-on-peer stuff, so that means people around your age group or a bit older. But looking at adults, people have got a much, generally will have a much larger, larger, longer range than you. Their arms are longer. You're not going to, and they're going to be physically stronger than you. You need to be looking at movements that are coming like this and an angle, okay, that, that, that you're striking away what comes towards you. So strike, strike, again. It's relaxed, strike, strike. 
strike, strike. And you can use a palm, strike, strike, slap hand as it moves away. Strike, strike, exit, okay? Let's go again. So decide what you want to do, okay? Straights, okay? Hooks, angle strikes, okay? Whatever you visualize your, your partner, your opponent is, rather, your enemy is. So we're standing here, okay? Strike, strike, exit, okay? Strike, strike, exit. Strike, strike, exit. Strike, strike, exit. Again. Strike, strike, exit. Strike, strike, exit. Strike, strike, exit. Good, okay. Strike, strike, exit. Strike, strike, exit. Okay, just choose what it is. Again, move around, drop levels. Drop levels, back up. Strike, strike, exit. Drop levels. Drop levels. Strike, strike, exit. Kneeling. Exit. Kneeling. Strike, 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 exit. Kneeling. Strike, strike, exit. Strike, strike, exit. Okay, good. Joe, right. one step, sorry, Joe, I've just got to let someone in. I'm just going to take the host back for a second. Go for it. Sorry about this. One second. No problem. <clears throat> oh, I should be on time. Okay, all good, Jamie. Thanks. Cool. Good. Okay, so next thing, again, moving into this whole idea about being grabbed and anti-grappling and people trying to get hold of you. We've got to drop in our hips back. Sometimes it's not enough. An exercise that will promote stronger um, leg defense, stronger lower, lower body defense, is a sprawl, comes straight out of wrestling. Um, and it's really, it's your takedown defense. And again, I think any system that, that teaches self-protection or any, and certainly any strike-based system, should really consider always having sprawls as being a regular part of their training. Because it will te it, it, it's gonna, it'll teach you anti-grappling. If, if there ever was the beginning of anti-grappling, it would be that. People talk about anti-grappling techniques. They're, they're things that, um, it often comes up as stuff where people who don't want to grapple, who don't want to train to grapple, like to, you know, like to put in, they think, oh, if I bite, if I eye gouge, I do all these nasty things. If I hit hard enough, I don't need to grapple. Um, truth is, it's not it's going to be the case. You get, a, get somebody who's, who's even half confident at grappling, they get hold of you, and you don't know how to grapple them, you're in trouble. Okay, it's as simple as that. Uh, you, you, we see examples of this all the time. Grappling is the most primitive instinct, and the most primitive, sorry, uh, most primitive unarmed fighting instinct. We probably grappled um, e uh, uh, evolutionary long before we struck with our hands, the chances are, certainly with our fists. We, we grab, we grab, we manipulate, we throw, we trip. These are all really instinctive things in us. So, you know, chances are someone's gonna grab hold of you. It's a very instinctive way for someone trying to control you. So learning fundamental anti-grappling techniques that come from grappling are important. You can put all the other nasty stuff on top of that to stop someone grabbing hold of you, but you need to have some sort of foundation skill with it. And sprawl is a great place to start. So the sprawl, you go down, you practice it a bit like a burpee, okay? If you don't know what a sprawl is, I highly recommend that after this, you go online, Google it, put sprawl in, S-P-R-A-W-L. Look at sprawling. And even if it's looking in sport, it doesn't matter. They're the best people to show you it. Rest with sprawling. Okay, drop, your hips are gonna hit the ground and you're gonna have your arms out here. You wouldn't have your arms out here as you're defending it. Okay, it's just we have to do this because we can't mimic the, 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 it uh, solo otherwise. So what the sprawl is, is you go here and your hips go down. Okay, so we go, we drop levels here like we were doing before and our hips hit the ground. We can hit the ground with the left hip, okay? Hit the ground with the right hip, okay? Or hit the ground with both. Depends on what the scenario is, what we're looking at. We're just getting, it's getting used to that. So everyone, sprawl, okay? Sprawl, sprawl, left sprawl. Right sprawl, left sprawl, right sprawl, sprawl. Okay, from here, we're gonna strike, okay? So we're gonna strike, 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 sprawl. Exit, again, strike, strike, sprawl, exit. 
Strike, strike, sprawl, exit. It's time we're gonna come up with a knee, okay? Someone's coming in, they're trying to grab you, trying to grab your legs, you're sprawling, so they don't pick you up. Again, it's great for kids because, you know, it's one of the things, again, that an adult will try and do, try and pick you up. So you need to better ground yourself, pull right down to the ground to get away. And sprawling will help you do that, okay? It makes you heavy, makes, you, makes it hard for someone to pull you off the ground to pick you up, that's what it's designed to do. So we're gonna go down, so as we go down, our knee is gonna come up, okay? So we're gonna sprawl, and as we come up, it's a knee, and we're gonna exit. Once again, strike, strike, sprawl, knee, exit. Again, strike, strike, sprawl, knee, exit. Relax, relax. Strike, strike, sprawl, knee, exit. So imagine you struck them, the strikes haven't worked, they tried to grab hold of you, you sprawled away, throwing the knee in, we're moving away. And that whole movement as we shift away there is pushing them away as you are making your exit point. Strike, strike, sprawl, knee, exit. And again, strike, strike, sprawl, knee, exit. Cool. Next one, covering. So when something incidentally happens to us, we get hit, we get struck, we need to be able to get over, regain the initiative. We're not learning how to block here, okay? Blocking at close range has got limited practicality. In fact, I would highly recommend that you test it um, at conversational range. Whenever we do these seminars, I get people and they have all different levels of ability, doing it to absolute beginners, people who've got huge martial arts backgrounds, often with more experience than me, and I put them up on these tests and few people can block at very, very close range. It's a very unlikely defense. We need to be, prep, we need to be preemptive most of the time. We'll come on to that. But if things go wrong, okay, we need to, have our, we need to be able to get back onto our front foot. It's no point if that someone's hitting us that we still then start going in a passive reactionary sort of way. Okay, someone attacks us, we've got to be able to get back onto our front foot. And we do that by covering. So the cover, just to show you guys up close, okay, I just do this. There are variations, there are different ways of doing it, different ways of people work their way, whatever. Okay, it doesn't really matter, provided you've got this triangle here. That's, that's the you know, strongest structure in the world. You've got that, and again, it works from different areas. And it's not a block, okay? You're simply, you've got hit, you, you cover, you crash in, and then you, then you come back out as quickly as you can. We don't want to be wrestling with them. We can avoid it, okay? We grapple because when we have to, but we strike when we can. So we grapple if we have to, we strike when we can. That's generally our policy. So the idea here is that we've got hit, we cover, okay, no, it's mobile, we move in, and we start striking. So that would be my response to back in, cover, strike, okay? So for this, to simulate the surprise, everybody close your eyes, okay, for this, okay? Then I'm gonna say cover. Close your eyes. So when I say cover, you open your eyes. Cover and then you go, you go in and then escape, okay? So this is the procedure. So I've got my eyes closed now. Cover, strike, exit, okay? So I'm just gonna say cover. So eyes closed, relax, cover. Eyes closed, relax, 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 cover. Okay. Relax, eyes closed, cover. Okay. Relax, eyes closed, cover. Eyes closed, cover. Okay, cool. So, moving on. Okay, so again, uh, you know, we just looked at it, we've gone through the obstacles, so that's on the list again. Right. Um, what we would do if we were doing a, a normal course is something we call predator versus prey. Um, uh, I've done it with the Lee Mullins guys. Yeah, it's definitely um, the predator versus prey drill. We've had that before. Um, it's, a, it's a really good test. Um, where you get uh, different people to play the roles of the predator and the other people to play the roles of the prey. And there's, there's so many things you can take out with human behavior, ways to test certain techniques, 
Um, but in, in essence, what it is, is it's uh, some, so, uh, a small number of people are designated to be the predators. Um, and then everyone else is the prey. And the idea is that uh, the prey obviously need to um, uh, get, get out of the way of the predators as quickly as they can. The predator gets hold of them, they've got about five seconds to get out. And we also involve things like, um, we have um, adults on standby there who can be, play the role of stand, uh, bystanders. And how do you attract their attention? What's the best way to attract their attention? Something called the bystander effect. Um, where you know a lot of people in a, if more people are around less likely anyone's going to do anything about it so there's a, there's a funny thing going on there so just as just as we need to be um, within large areas you've got less chance of somebody uh, attacking you if somebody does attack you in an area where you've got lots of people the chances are other people won't get involved they, they call it the bystander effect and it's happened throughout history it's not it's nothing um, special about our time or all these other things uh, that you know that you often hear people put their own ideas onto it's just a simple it's again, it comes back to this pack mentality so um, what we do to defeat bystander effect is that we learn how to uh, get eye contact with individuals um, and, and to and to ask the specific instructions so you get asked like, you know uh, stop him stop him stop this but you know stop this person or order other people you you get hold of him you you know uh, block him off this kind of thing um you know it's against instructions it's being specific about your instructions and and look who, who you're calling on to um be your help so again when we're out and we're being um, we're being aware, we're being switched on, we're out in the town, which is what we should be doing all the time. And when we're out and about, it's important to be um, looking around and seeing different people who could be potential allies in a crisis situation. Um, you know, the more crowded the area, the more you need to be doing that. Who's more likely to be able to help you? Um, you know, again, we again we're pack animals, but we need to learn how to how the pack works. And the pack works by eye contact and by specific instructions. So again, you need to have in your mind you know, some very, very easy set specific instructions. Uh, and stop him, stop him, you know, is a, is a very, very simple one. You know, it, it, rather than just blatantly help, okay? Okay, S stop him, stop him, he's attacking me. You know, again, you might need to get sort of that sort of explanation to somebody, but generally speaking, that's what people are looking for. Um, you know, and again, if you're recruiting help, if you're going in to help somebody, it's, it's getting other people involved as well. Most people want to help. Okay, they just don't know, they just need the instructions. So this then moves us on to the situation with bullying, okay, specifically. And again, at the moment, we're probably seeing more online bullying than anything else. Okay, but uh, again, it's, 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 again, this is all part of the pack. Um, bullies have got various different motivations why, why they're bullies. But generally speaking, they themselves are trying to put themselves in a position of authority within a group. And, and their belief of being able to do that is by putting down other people. And you might be that target. So they look for easy targets. So we've already gone through this to begin with. You know, don't look vulnerable. Um, you, know, be, you know, your behavior, no one has the right to hurt you. No one has the right to bully you. Okay, so let's, let's get that completely straight. I'm not victim blaming here. Um, what we're doing is we're target hardening. Um, and again, unfortunately, you know, human instinct is as it's always been, and you'll find this in different types of individuals anyway, they will look for an easy target. So first of all, that's, you know, we, we need to target harden. So getting our confidence, working on our confidence, making sure that we've, you know, we've got our self-respect. Um, again, a bully is usually a coward. So again, this is why you know target hardening is important. Make the target difficult for them. If it's a difficult sort of, if you're a difficult person for them to target, then generally speaking, they're not going to want to come after you. That's the, that's often a good. You know, you've won half the battle already there. They use use force or some uh, some form of pressure to get his or her own way. Okay, so that's again, that's generally what the definition of it with of a bully is. They use force or some form of pressure to get their own way. Okay, so again, you know, we're looking at that. Um, it can be physical, physical, but it can it can use words and they can use both. So again, this is all setting up our respect and our attitude um, boundaries in place. And boundaries, again, this comes back to our point again about boundaries. Um, they often have their own problems. Okay, so there are other motivations that are behind it. Okay, now, unfortunately with us, when we're dealing with a bullying situation, that's not immediately of importance to us. Um, our importance is to stop them from bullying us, to prevent them from bullying us. But sometimes you can talk when you talk to people and you, and you establish a connection with somebody. Um, that's a great way to sort of reduce somebody from bullying. You know, you can understand they've got their own problems, you know. Um, sometimes it depends in different, in different scenarios. But I've found it when people have... 
in the past, whenever I, I was targeted and I was able to talk my way out of situations, one of the things that I learned early on was being able to find something in common with that person, um, putting it back onto them in terms of like, in a sympathetic way, um, you know, uh, come on, what, you know, what, what, you know what, what appears to be the problem here, being able to talk it out with them. Um, again, so, but first of all, the trouble is, is that again, if we're looking at the word situation, this is what draws a lot of people into physical fights okay unavoidable uh, you know avoidable fights so we need to be able to deal with these words so it's all right saying to people what's that <laughs> one second jamie yeah is a head knock a thing of self-defense We'll cover that in the questions at the end. Okay, all right. I'm just looking at just looking at dealing with words at the moment. Okay, so when people um, again again when it comes to to dealing with words, words are what, are what draw a lot of people into physical situations that could be avoided. Um, so our first one one here. Okay, as we go through it. Second. Yeah. So insults. So again. Yeah, as I said, it's easy to say to somebody, don't get drawn into a fight. Don't get, um, uh, it's, it's, it's easy to say to somebody, um, don't get baited. Uh, in, you know, um, you have to have a good attitude to walk away from a, a fight situation, to walk away from an insult. But when the reality happens and you're feeling really bad about yourself because what somebody's saying to you and you don't want to fire back because you don't want to make it into a fight situation, you're trying to do that part of it, it still can really hurt you if you're taking on board what they're saying. So, you know, anyone to fire something good about you, you know, try and fire back something, uh, sorry, sorry, something bad about you. Fire something good about yourself. That's often the bounce back. This is what uh, Robert Higgs, an um, anti-bullying expert um, uh, who uh, goes all around the country. He wrote um, a few books, again, I, I'd recommend of his. Um, one of the things he points out is sort of saying something good back. Always start, try and bounce back with something good about yourself. Okay, so you're ugly. I, 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 I think I'm pleasant looking. Um, um, you, you, could, it could, you could keep saying, you know, whatever bad someone comes back to you, you come back with something good about yourself. It's hard for them to track with it. Rather than firing back, what they want you to do is, is to say, no, I'm not, or um, you're ugly too. Okay, we say, uh, I, I, think I'm, I, I think I'm okay. I'm happy with myself. And, and it keeps going, it's, there's no traction for them. There's no fire for them to, to, to burn through, to catch on to. Again, keep it short. Don't be drawn into a conversation. Okay, a lot of time when bullies are trying to, they're trying to snare you. Okay, it's, it's like a, it's like um, it's like a, a, some form of trap, some form of bait. Uh, when people bait an animal to, to to capture an animal to eat it, such as a fish, for example, they put bait on the end of a hook, they stick it in the water, and the fish go, goes to the bait. Get, they catch the bait and they get brought in. Same thing here. Um, a bully is looking for things that either an insult that's going to make you upset, so they can just um, that they can then keep going at you, or, you, or they'll or you'll fire back, and then you'll, you'll you fall into their trap of of getting uh, um, berated by them, getting uh, attacked by them, uh, and, and then it can escalate into a fight situation. So keep it short. Short. don't be drawn into a conversation um, don't be blackmailed or threatened tell somebody trust really really important here okay no matter how bad a secret is that somebody has about you if they're gonna if they're gonna use that secret um, to get something off you uh, the first thing to do is to be honest okay go uh, preempt them to it and it'll put them off like nothing else you know as soon as you know I always say press the fast forward button so if somebody says something, you know, I'm going to tell the teacher about this, or I'm going to tell your, your parent about this, or, I'm, or you know, I'll tell everybody that you did this, that, and the other. No matter how bad it is, to know that that person has that secret about you, and they're going to use that to get something else, um, it's far worse for, for them to hold that secret on you and to be able to use it to get something else than you then just being facing up and going straight out to do it. And it will give a message to them that they, they haven't won, that they work, that they, they can't do that with you. It's um, against an important thing. So blackmail or, threaten, or, or threats. Don't, um, don't let somebody use that to get their own way with you, ever. Honesty is always a good policy. Um, again, with threatening, if someone threatens you, you know, seek help immediately. Go to your parents. Always, always be able to go to your parents. No matter how uh, bad the situation is, always be able to go straight to them and speak to them. It's very, very important. Um, and anyone you, or anyone else you can trust, obviously, an adult you can trust. Um, again, this is really important. Understand that no is a perfectly acceptable answer and should be respected. No is a single, can be a single sentence. No, full stop. Okay, say no. 
Okay, if somebody doesn't take no as an answer, that there's only one thing they want to do, and that's to control you. So if you said to somebody, you know, if they said to you, um, you know, can I copy your homework, uh, and you said no, or or, uh, or can I borrow something from you, and you know they're going to break it, we don't trust them with it, or it's something that you've been told that you've got to hold on to. Um, for whatever reason it is um and you say no you can say no politely absolutely i think the more polite it is the less chance you're going to aggravate a situation but always understand that no is a perfectly acceptable answer and people who don't accept no as an answer they only want to do one thing and that's to control you so that's a really really important rule to go to um, of course you have a few options okay so comply where would we comply in a self-defense situation so you would comply if um again it's, so let's say someone's being aggressive um, and they want to get something off you and they're going to be and it looks like it's going to be violent and they're dangerous okay that's a classic way of complying okay it's easier to just you know someone threatens you with a weapon okay and they want money off you give them the money okay give them the money and get out of there your your priority is to escape not to not to hold on to that money um, I always look at that situation with um, my daughter once asked me she said uh, um, you know what would happen if somebody you know pulled a weapon on you and uh, and asked for your money and I said well I'd give them the money and she was shattered for a moment there because you know martial arts instructor daddy you know done trained with lots of different uh, martial artists and she'd seen me fight and uh, all my background and all this sort of thing and suddenly just shattered because I'm so used to seeing even though things I'd said and I'd hoped had gone in um, this image of somebody would you know not going to give over your money you're not going to give over some of that and I said well okay let's look at it this way you come to me in a hospital and I'm on a hospital bed and I'm dying or I'm in a serious injury that's going to affect me for the rest of my life where I can hardly walk and and I say to and and, and I say to you um I'm here because I was defending my money I was here because I didn't want that person to get hold of my money would you be proud of me and of course you go oh no of course not the only time and you have to decide to yourself where when is when is complying not going to be um uh, uh, it, when it's when when it's complying not acceptable so when it's not giving in so not giving in to some someone would be someone tries to take you away okay um it could be somebody wants to do something physically with you you don't want them to do okay that is that is a time where you would not necessarily comply where, where you would say no where you would stop okay but and you'd have to fight maybe uh, but again comply someone's someone's asking you for money and they've got an obvious and they're, they're an obvious threat okay it's not a bad thing to do that. And give them the money and then you can dob them into the police straight away, you know, and, and call on help afterwards. Um, but again, yeah, someone's threatening you with a violent situation and, um, and you can see it could be a very dangerous situation. That might have to be uh, an example you comply. Every situation is different, but that's just a typical example. Dissuade, okay. So this is, again, this is the talking down. This is the, this is the, uh, the telling it's not such a good idea. So a lot of time we can dissuade people by how we look, okay, just by, just by being uh, confident and showing that we're confident. Less likely, we're less likely to be a target, but to dissuade and to talk somebody down, how do we do that? How do we de-escalate that? Well, there's, you know, someone could be an aggressive, they want to pick on you with a fight, you might change the subject. You might talk about something else. You might try and take it away from it. You might start trying to, um, again, back to that point I talked to you before about trying to look at things from their point of view. So I can see you're upset. I can see you want, you want to fight me. I don't want to fight you. Why would you really want to fight me? And it's not going to make you feel any better about it anyway. Um, and then, you know, and try and move it on like that. Again, their, uh, their ideas of de-escalation. Now, when a fight happens, something physical happens, the longer you're in a physical fight, the worse it's likely to be, the more the higher the risks are going to be to you and to other people involved. Okay. But the longer it is at the beginning of a fight, before a fight happens, the better it is because the more chance you've got of them of them cooling down thinking maybe they shouldn't what maybe they shouldn't hurt you maybe there's something about you that they they like they, they might like or they might think oh, this guy's not an enemy after all um there could be any number of different things that just put them off um and sometimes they need a loophole you know sometimes you know you whatever say a loophole you need to give them an excuse why not to attack you okay so again they, they call that you know like loopholing saving face you know even that could be just well i don't want to fight you you know you're, you know you're much tougher than me you know, it's quite simple uh, it's, it, that's something that a lot of people don't expect they expect people to stand up i mean i remember i've seen that so many times you know in school situations where people are forced into fights which they they you know they, they don't feel confident they're going to win anyway and it's, again it is a trap so a lot of the time again that's part of the dissuading and de-escalation the longer you've got to talk to somebody um, in a sort of a pre-fight situation, the more chance you've got them stopping them from fighting you. 
distract. Okay, again, it's all part of just distract. Um, yeah, can we keep it unmuted until then? Okay, thanks. Okay. <clears throat> distract my slide. Apologies, Jamie. The parent's not there. I'll uh, mess with you to uh, switch it off. Okay, cheers. <coughs> thanks, Lee. Cheers. So distract, I mean, again, distraction, again, is a classic example. Um, <clears throat> you know, again, some people, some people can use humour. Um, again, that depends on the different situations. Um, again, it's all just distraction. It's all just taking things off the situation. You know, <clears throat> changing the subject. If you can change the subject, even better with, with somebody who's obviously being aggressive and conflict and getting their opinion on certain things. It might not feel like it to begin with, that they're being irritated because they know they're being worked. But at the same time, you distract somebody, more chance of them you know, talk, talk it down, more chance it's going to move away. Assert. So this is standing up for yourself. So obviously, you know, you go in and somebody's picking on you on a regular basis and uh, you're, you're proving to be um, just an easy target for them all the time. Sometimes you know, just by being an assertion, again, this is it. This is your back off, stay where you are, okay? This is when you need to assert. They call this assert. It's not aggression, it's assert. I said no, you know, that's this, this kind of thing. Okay, that's assertion. And in certain times when you would need to say, I'm, I'm not having it, I'm not, I'm not doing it. And, and, it, and it works. Okay, so again, we, we, um, on a pressure testing sort of thing we might do, again, there's something else called, the, they call it the broken record, and we might think of it these days as a, a song stuck on repeat. So imagine when you've got like a, you've got a device on, with it, you've got a song, and the song just keeps going on and on and on, it plays again and again. Has anyone ever had that, when they've like, just had a song that seems to be on a loop? Okay, that that's a way of sometimes dealing with a person. So someone wants to, someone says, um, uh, um, do you, uh, um, uh, um, do, um, uh, can I copy your homework? And you say, no, I don't want you to copy my homework. Um, we'll get, but we'll both get in trouble if you copy my homework. Oh, no, 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 I, I'll make sure I'm, I, I, you know, I'll just copy it and put it into my own words, it'll be okay. No, it, I, I don't want that. Um, uh, you're not copying my homework. You're not copying my homework. Every time you end the sentence with, but you're not copying my homework. And you can start it with things like, yeah, I understand, I know it's very, very difficult. You could try different things, but you're not copying my homework. And you just keep repeating it again and again. It's the same way as people who used to work, um, work nightclubs, work, work places where, um, you know, uh, you know, nightclub people go out for parties, pubs and that, and you've got people standing on the doors who work security. They often use what they call, you know, a song stuck on repeat. I understand, but you're not coming in. Okay, so if there's somebody that's not supposed to go in there, because wherever they're dressed, They'd end the sentence always, I understand, but you're not coming in. And, and they might shout, they might insult, and you keep your cool, and you go, I understand, you're not coming in. Same thing here. Um, um, you know, just stay away. Yeah, I get it. I understand. Just stay away. Yeah, I'm ugly. You, you don't like me. Just stay away. Again, that broken record all the time. And again, again, it can work for so many different things. It's something you don't want, you're not comfortable with, um, and somebody keeps on trying to not take no for an answer. Again, that's often a good tactic, just to keep feeding it back all the time. Again, another good book, um, Superpowers for Parents. That's a good one for parents out there. Um, I highly recommend Superpowers for Parents. Um, talks about simple um, strategies, um, and again, devised by psychiatrists, a child psychiatrist actually, um, for stop it for, for children being able to handle that kind of pressure. People trying to do something. I'm not going to steal. I, I, I understand. Yeah, you want to go get this the, the, those sweets out of that shop but I'm, I'm not going to steal. I'm not going to steal. Just, just keep saying it. And just, you know, again, you, and have, you've got enough respect for yourself to know that it's the right thing to do. That would be an example of that. The broken record or song stuck on repeat. So, okay, we want to some questions now, shall we? Yes, yeah, cool. Jamie? Yeah? Who am I, who am I speaking to? Uh, Charlie, is it? So, what will happen if you're, like, really poor and they ask to give you, and they are and they tell you to give them money, but when you give them money and you don't have any more, they ask for more. Yeah, well, that's a very good question, Charlie. As I said, every every situation is different, so I don't like giving like an easy answer to every, to every single one. So if that money that you've got, if you, if you know that they just do that on a regular basis, you have to decide what the threat is. That might be a situation where your option is, is assertion. I mean, originally, somebody asked you for money, so, right, someone asks you for money, and you have to decide how, what, what sort of threat are they? Okay, so if this is somebody like, are you saying this is somebody around about your sort of age? How are you imagining the person who's, who's, who's threatening you in this situation? How are we imagining him? A robber? Sorry? Like, 
like a really okay. bad man. A, ba a bad man? A bad man. Well, like an adult asking you for money. An adult. An adult asks you for money. Well, it's again, not a child. Yeah, yeah. Well, even if you have to give, if you have to give someone your money, and you're in a situation where, you know, you can't assert you can't say no because you, you're worried that you're going to get physically hurt in that situation and you haven't got much of a, a chance if you fought if you fought them again giving the money is not a problem um you just then need to be able to then tell tell somebody straight away this is what's happened to you because that person's already committed a crime they've already been ste stealing so that's where you report it that's when you always always say it so um yeah but but when you, if you're talking about another child who every day is going to ask you for your money then that's assertion and you from the beginning you need to be able to stand up and be able to say say no you're not having it you're not having it this is mine Okay, um, if, you, if you threaten me again, I'm going to tell, uh, I'm, I'm going to speak to the teacher, I'm going to speak to my parents or whatever, being able to have that, that level of assertion to be able to do that, to be able to, to, be able to control that situation. It depends on what the risk is, you see, uh, Charlie. It depends on how bad the risk is. If somebody is a great big person who's going to be a serious threat to you, what I'm saying is give them that money and then go, and then go report them, get out of there as quickly as you can. Okay, if it's somebody who you're going to see every day, okay that's going to try and get your money off then then from day one you've, you've got to be able to assert yourself on that and, and report them as well okay yeah it's always important though to always report a person who's who you think is going to hurt you like okay, physically hurt you when you after you've done it because then you know from day one the adults know that you've done the right thing to begin with so if you ever do have to physically you get in a physical fight with them so they do get things worse you, that they know straight away from day one that, that, that you have been the person who, who, who doesn't want to fight. It's called covering your tracks. <laughs> Thank you. Pleasure. Okay. Anyone else? Ethan, did you want to ask something? No. Nah. That's okay. Okay, any more questions, guys? If you, if you need to ask a question, unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Actually... Excuse me, but what happens if just say someone they've got a weapon that's life threatening mm -hmm. and they walk up and they walk up to you and they say I don't know they they give you a serious threat and you can see they're not going to be they're actually going to do it. Like just say someone walks up to you with a knife and they say and then they tell you go and rob a place or I'll stab you with this knife. Okay. Well, that's it again. And so you're uh, again, different situations, different, uh, different, different circumstances. Like a, like a grown adult. Like a grown adult wants you, okay, wants you to do something when they, well, again, uh, it's a very hard judgment thing to do, but again, the important thing I would say with that, okay, Ethan, is it's again because it's not easy to answer that kind of situation. If you're stuck in a situation where you've got a, heart, a, a person holding a, a nice trade and telling you to do something, um, you're good, you, your your uh, your uh, health and well-being is is the most important thing there. Okay, so you need to do whatever they're asking you to do at that particular moment in order, and as soon as you can escape, get out of it. Okay, that's what you're going to be thinking about doing. Okay, so for the time being, you're going to be thinking about. I've got to be able to escape. However, and this is the important thing, the next part of, of the course is awareness. Okay, this is what we're about to touch on there. there. So, um, and a lot of people, when we do self-defense situations, have someone holding a knife at them. Okay, it's a common thing that you see because it's what you watch and you see, and you see people doing defenses against knives and you see, um, and it's a scenario that a lot of people w work on. Um, however, what I like to emphasize all the time is everything we can do to prevent that situation happening and up to the situation where someone pulls a knife on you there will have been several signals that have been given away where you, where you could probably have got out of that situation okay this is important that's important to be able to train that that person has first got a has got to target you okay so that's number one we've got to assume that they see you as a target so you just said it's an adult so yes an adult could target any child although to be honest they'll generally try and target a child that they that, that they feel is not going to give them a much aggravation it's not going to make much of a noise or whatever like that they're going to if they, they do want to target so again but let's say for argument's sake they've targeted somebody who's who's 
you know, being confident, whatever. You've got that part of it. So they've got to, they've got to approach you. So you, so you know that they're coming towards you. They, they know that you know that they're, they're coming towards you. Then you've got to be identified, are they armed? Now, if they're carrying a knife, that knife, they can't be walking around holding that knife. As soon as they're walking around holding that knife, chance are they're going to get caught straight away. Someone's going to alert them to do that. They're going to pull it out at a la the last moment. To show you, so there's lots of signs that how people are carrying it and how they're and how they they're, they're, they're moving forward. This is why awareness is so important, and awareness needs to be underlined by um, attitude. So, mm -hmm. in an actual situation scenario, there, I'll definitely answer your question. And that's a very difficult one because different people, different situations, different circumstances. And what I'm not, what I'm saying is not going to be the absolute answer. I would never ever say that because every every situation is different. But my argument would be is that if you're, in a, if you're an immediate threat with somebody who's going to physically hurt you, and you haven't got much hope of being able to get away from them at that particular moment, your job now is to use this to talk to them as much as you can um, to get to make them assured that you're not going to hurt you're not going to fight back uh, whilst all the time looking for when you're going to make an exit there have been plenty of examples of children who have even been kidnapped and during their time being kidnapped um, that all they've done is is to keep this this going all the time where they, they're showing the person who's kidnapping them they're not a threat to them that they're not going to do anything and whilst they're doing that they're looking for where the exit points are that's why again we did that exercise there where we just keep going towards a, an exit point so it's a really good part part of your regular training so when you're doing your catters when you're doing your exercises always try and factor in a little bit of time for when you're going to exit points and when you're out going when you're going down the town with or, um, uh, uh, when you're in a uh, a shop or you're walking down the street or you're walking anywhere else look at look at things where, where where are potential hazards where are places where people cannot see you okay and they're places to avoid obviously uh, and be aware of looking around with you all the time on it because then you'll pick up on those signs early on as well okay is that is that helpful okay do you yes yeah okay good thank you thank you for the question thank any you. more guys because we've, we've gone right over time now. So if anyone's got any more quickly, because Jamie doesn't want to be here all day. <laughs> no, that's fine. Can yeah, you go on, John. Um, about breathing in a situation, fight situation, how do you co control your breathing? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Okay, but uh, generally speaking, um, I always, come, when, I do, when I do my training, I always come back down to um, breathing in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, out two three now that's a dramatic version of it that's when you're doing your actual your actual training so it's a uh, you do like a, an edited version of that when when you feel the stress happening to you so as your heart rate starts going off you you, you, you just take a controlled breath of it but you make sure that you're going in up, hold out as you're going and again it's again try, trying to control that but again if you do a lot of that as a practice it's like doing your press-ups you do lots of press-ups makes you make, make can make your uh, a lot of your upper body strength techniques stronger you do deep breathing exercises therefore you've got more of a chance of being more connected to your breathing in, in a stressful situation um, but again a lot of that the best way to find a lot of these things with the breathing and that kind of thing is to do pressure testing okay it's to do pressure testing exercises appreciate we're in lockdown at the moment some of you who are in lockdown with fellow trainers you've you know you've got a partner to train with put yourself in situations where you close your eyes and you get that shock and you go straight into whatever drill you're doing Okay, those of you on your own, if you want, you can put you could um, put a series of sounds on if you like, um, and decide when when a certain sound uh, you hear a certain sound, that's when you're going to open your eyes and you're going to do whatever drill you're going to do, your fighting drill. So you're, you're stimulating that stress response, and then you're going to that immediately comes back onto your breathing part of it again because your stress, as soon as your heart rate goes up, then your breathing starts to speed up because you want to be taking in more oxygen. And you just start you, you you learn how to control that so that would be my that would be my answer my answer is that in regular training do your deep breathing exercises which where you breathe in two three four hold two three four out two three four and what tends to happen is you instinctively start to regulate that breathing um, as your heart rate goes up and you get into more of a stressful situation but again practice it the more you practice it the more that the more that then becomes you know part and parcel of of how you act um, under high pressure. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, Jamie. Pleasure. Right, lovely. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining, and thanks to Jamie for a brilliant session. I hope you all um, took something away from that because I think it's really important that you know this stuff. I know we do try and cover it in lesson, but we've only got a short amount of time to do hard skills as well. So we try and fit in these soft skills at the same time. 
and we take massive inspiration from Jamie because he knows what he's talking about. And uh, Jamie, we'll definitely have you back. And uh, Jamie, we'll so definitely have you back. Ben, I'll send some, uh, I'll send some links over for relevant material as well. Brilliant. Thanks, yeah. Jamie. Thank you. Thank you.